Mimi ni PTR LM Tumizulu wa Marifado. Ni enani aliyekufundisha maana ya maisha. Who taught you the meaning of life? Family and tribal happiness, peace, health, longevity and natural balance on earth gives meaning to life. This is Ubuntu Maati philosophy. I am because you are. When you suffer, I suffer. When you thrive, I thrive. The creator needs no human worship or praise. But all this was disturbed by some evil forces. Today, we live in a world that is unbalanced or hostile as well as violent. Those who teach the meaning of life today may be the evil forces that disturbed Ubuntu Maati harmony. They include among many popular book religions which are followed by billions of melanin dominant humans. The scientific world, scientists and almost all philosophers that base their explanations on a no fossil record found evolutionary theory. Materialists, yet you are not even your body. Deniers of the soul reality is the brain, you or a seat of your soul. Who then should teach you the meaning of life? Popular faiths that have been drummed into a melanin dominant human heads like Christianity, Islam and Judaism teach that your life is to worship God. Yet our ancestors taught us that you cannot worship a non-being nor spirit presence. And the very few today know that the creator is not God. The creators of uh, these uh, religions that are followed today by millions of melanin dominant humans also promised that if you follow them, you go to heaven. And if you don't follow them, you go to hellfire. Therefore, whoever crafted these religions indeed has shaped melanin dominant human understanding of the meaning of life. You cannot take chances with this greatest and significant paradigm of existence. Sadly, most melanin dominant humans have ceased to experience their natural gift of life and have given it to the Greco-Roman created idol called Jesus today, meaning that their own life is dead and that they are not experiencing their life but the life of this phantom. In Galatians 2.20 it says, I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. And we have said, our ancestors taught us that the creator is not God. You cannot worship a non-being nor a spirit essence because the spirit is a created entity a being is a created entity and we are dealing with the metaphysical aspect of that. Our societal norms and ancient natural beliefs have been uprooted and cast away as useless. This is what your pastor, your imam, your rabbi is doing every time he preaches or teaches you. Never forget this. That the real mission of Christianity was to demean our own Bantu and melanin dominant lives. Their real mission uh, goes uh, like this. Convert always the blacks by using the whip. We have seen it. If you've watched Kunta Kinte, the roots, it happened and colonialism and enslavement. Keep their women in nine months of submission to work freely for us. Force them to pay you in sign of recognition goats, chickens or eggs every time you visit their villages. That's what happened and that's what is happening in all African societies that is accepted Christianity. They love their pastors. They love their missionaries. They gave them gifts. They gave them land. They gave them respect and honor. And make sure that the niggas never become rich. 
make them pay tax each week at Sunday Mass. Use the money suppose, suppose for the poor to build flourishing business centers. Institute a confessional system which allows you to be good detectives denouncing any black that is a different consciousness contrary to that of the decision maker. Think about that. This is what we were taught about the meaning of life. Teach the niggers to forget their heroes and to adore only ours. Never present a chair to a black that comes to visit you. Don't give him more than one cigarette. Never invite him for dinner even if he gives you a chicken every time you arrive at his house. This is the letter from King Leopold the second of Belgium to African missionaries 1883. This is the people that taught us the meaning of life today. On the other hand, the Muslims, they say, uh, Allah says in the Quran, whosoever kills an innocent human being, it shall be as if he has killed all mankind. And whosoever saves the life of one, it shall be as if he had saved the life of all mankind. It's a fantastic teaching, almost Ubuntu, but in the same book, in the same Quran, it, Quran 9.29 says, Fight those who believe not in Allah, nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden which had been forbidden by Allah and his messenger, nor acknowledge the religion of truth even if they are of the people of the book, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. A contradiction straightforward and this is what they practiced they are not a religion of peace they are a religion of war bloodshed genocide and destruction that's the life they teach you that's the life they give you that's the life they want you to live if you are a Muslim of any kind whether black or yellow or what this is their book this is what it teaches in verse uh, in Quran verse 2, 199, it says, Kill the unbelievers wherever you find them. In another one, it says, Make war on the infidels living in your neighborhood. And another one says, When opportunity arises, kill the infidels wherever you catch them. Any religion other than Islam is not acceptable. So they killed and destroyed Ubuntu, Ma'ati philosophy. They might not do it today. They might pretend to like you, to love you, but this is their intention to destroy it. The Jews and the Christians are perverts. Fight them. See, among us, even themselves, maim and crucify the infidels if they criticize Islam. There it is. This is half of our brother's Almost the whole world follow this and think they have found it. What then will we learn about life other than forced conversions? Over 10 verses that we have given here teaches destruction. Therefore, they cannot teach us life. Yet millions surrender to this. And governments and the corporate world teach us the meaning of life. No, not at all. Our country's laws are written to comply with these religions and their spin-off ideologies like capitalism, neocolonialism, socialism, atheism, communism, high education, technological development, entertainment, and evolution. The economic model of Judeo-Christian work ethic ignores Ubuntu Ma'ati philosophy of life. These are the masters who taught you the meaning of life. They say, get a job, go to work, get married, have children, follow fashion, act normal, walk on the pavement, watch TV, obey the law, save for your old age. Now repeat after me, I am free. That's democracy. That's what they teach. It's not life. There's nothing to do with life here. It's a robot or, man or zombie existence. What about scientists? Here's a question. How did scientists act during colonialism and enslavement of melanin-dominant humans on earth? What did they say? Can they teach us the meaning of life? In the 1850s, a Louisiana scientist claimed to have found a disease that he called repertomania, which made slaves run away from their masters. Can such people teach us anything about life? Not at all. 
not in a million years. Drepetomania. And this is how they say it should be cured. Cutting off the leg of anyone who desired to run away. These are scientists. You call them scientists. They say slaves who wanted to run away had an irrational mentality. And they say either you whip them to treat drepetomania or cut off their legs like this. What a shame. What an evil people can scientists, modern scientists who descended from this, teach us anything about life? Not at all. What about modern scientists? Are they honest in teaching the natural definition of the meaning of life which is credible for melanin dominant humans? Not at all. Because their science is based on evolution and atheism. Science offers a physical chemical explanation on the meaning of life. So you are just an entity of accident. You are a blip on nothingness. They never helped anyone during colonialism and enslavement. Here is what one of the eminent scientists said about life. I am a collection of water, calcium, and organic matter, said Carl Sagan. Therefore, he said you are a collection of almost identical molecules with a different collective label. But is that all? Is there nothing in here but just molecules? It is their probing and their discoveries which then becomes the confirmation of something that our ancestors had pointed out in times gone by. Something Christianity, Islam and Judaism has butchered and thrown to the pigs. Let's find that. You are not even your body. That's what our ancestors say. This is the depiction of what science found as molecules, both inanimate dehydrogen and animate retinal molecules, myosin molecules, and the human molecules. And then they discovered that the human cells change every seven years, which means that a person changes completely, but sometimes only a few days are enough to change you. This is the basis of what is happening today with their desire to change us by planting into us technological devices that completely removes the naturalness in us. How they have misunderstood it. About 98% of the atoms in the human body are renewed yearly. This surprising fact is discussed by Dr. Posey Abbasson of Oak Ridge in the latest annual report of the Smithsonian Institution. Dr. Abbasson based this conclusion on experiments with radioisotopes which trace the movements of chemical elements in and out of the body. So they have proved that. Which is what our ancestors did with initiations. Every seven years you are initiated. Every seven years you are initiated to readjust these changes. Another one says studies at the Oak Ridge Atomic Research Center revealed that about 98% of all atoms in a human body are replaced every year. You get a new suit of skin every month and a new liver every six weeks. The lining of your stomach lasts only a few days. It is replaced. Even your bones are not as solid or stable structures you might have thought them to be. They are undergoing constant change. The bones you have today are different from the bones you had a year ago or the year to come. So you are not even your body. This is the basis of our ancestral teaching. Is the brain you or the seat of your soul? Think about that. Think about that. In 2007, Terence Sejnowski, an American computational neuroscientist, stated the following about turnover in respect of memory mechanism. We come to the key why you need your memory. Because your totems, your ancestral line, and your belief system as a Muntu is a memory card for you to transition in the physical realm. But scientists are puzzled. They say, I've been puzzled by uh, my ability to remember my childhood even though most of the molecules in my body today are not the same ones I had as a child. In particular, the molecules that make up my brain are constantly being replaced with newly minted molecules. Despite this molecular turnover, I have 
detailed memories of places that I have lived 50 years ago. In 1955, another scientist, Richard F. Feynman, in his The Value of Science, discussed the turnover of atom in his mind. He said, discussed it as follows. The atoms that are in the brain are being replaced. The ones that were there before have gone away. So what is this mind of ours? What are these atoms associated with consciousness? Last week's potatoes, they now can remember what was going on in my mind a year ago. A mind which has long ago been replaced. The individuality is only a pattern or a dance. That is what it means when one discovers how long it takes for the atoms of the brain to be replaced by other atoms. There is something in you here. There is something in the Muntu that our ancestors discovered. Modern thinkers now stop at this point to protect evolution and other biases. They cannot go beyond. Who then should teach you the meaning of life? Everyone should be interested in atoms. We are much more intimate with atoms than we realize. They make up all the air we breathe, all the food we eat, our flesh and blood and bones, and everything around us. In fact, all the matter in the world, the planets, the stars, and the faraway galactic universes, each of us, from a purely physical standpoint, is a large batch of atom. So, where did the Greeks get the idea of atoms that science is seized on? They got it from Bantus, from the name Atum. That's the Greek one. But the bad one is Atema, meaning black or melanin. This is where they get atom. We have reached at the core and the center of the meaning of life, the divinities and our ancestors who passed the knowledge of divinities to us. Our ancestors laid this foundation. They were the first to discover the building blocks of life. Atoms and atom refers to the conjecture that the Greek term atom or atomos, which was introduced by Lespicius 470 BCE, which supposedly means uncutable, is derived from and related to the name of the Egyptian divinity atom or atema. In 580 BCE, Thales, among Greek philosophers, initiated the study abroad in Hamid method of ancient Egypt. Although little is known about Lespicius, the supposed coiner of the term Atomos, we do know that his student Democritus did study in Egypt. You can get this in Pliny, who wrote in 770 AD, for up to seven years. According to some accounts, accordingly, Democritus, speculatively speaking, would have learned at least the following basic religious mythology cosmologies and there in thematically got the idea of the first earth, Ivu, Umtaba, Atum, Atema, arising out of or existing in the void aspects of the org god the gods who space and who had infinity specifically new new a bad term for waves here's the question who then should teach you the meaning of life the greeks or where the greeks landed you are the source our ancient ancestors possessed a primitive consciousness in comparison with ourselves and Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, as well as science, drank from their well of knowledge. Our ancestors were much closer to the divinities and they felt the presence of the divinities and experienced the presence of the divinities. They learned life from the divinities. You too can experience this today. First, there are conditions to absorb these facts from the source. You have two objectives, to perfect yourself and to perfect the community of which you are part of. 
the vast majority of humanity and human beings fail in both regards. They simply follow what's fashionable and do very little or no research at all. This is our creation. This is the explanation of who we are. The atoms now in your body are being replaced by new atoms at an amazingly rapid rate. How do we know all this? How do we follow all the fast and complicated maneuvers that atoms enter into and out of our bodies and other complex systems? Because the soul has nine parts that operate. We have nine frequencies that constitute the soul. This you have never been taught by Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. They just say soul. Then they say the spirit. You need the Holy Spirit. Then they say you fear the devil. They say they are angels. Yet, all we know is that they converted angels from divinities. And all the other aspects are all aspects of the soul. The meaning of life is beyond the atoms again. It is a tomb. It is the divine you. It is the mouth level you, the soul. You are here to defeat the illusion of all non bandu religions, racialized science, evolution, atheism, and in the process, experience matter using your melanin dominant body. You cannot understand the meaning of life outside your cultural, ancestral, congruent religion and spirituality. The message. Marifa Doshes is only for the wise ones who feel the gaps in between which we live. The place to look for the meaning of life is not outside, but inside. This is why the Bible teaches that Jesus stands at the door knocking to enter into you. We suggest strongly that you do not open. If he is already in chase him out, you may ask who will then sit on the throne of me. Or you? The answer is no one. Not even you. For you are not a single dimensional but divine entity. This is the meaning of life. Ba life. Ntu being. A divine spark. Umoya. Mweya. Roho. This is your Bantu identity. Which is your power. Cultural congruence. Is how we wake up once the ancestral waves and cycles helps us by revealing our true original meaning of life and all things necessary now as we prepare for the next phase cultural congruence when we finally discard the flesh we use the cultural congruence Maati Ubuntu in the judgment hall. To learn more and to be in control of your destiny, send an email to join at marifado.com. Life should be ancestral biased. Subscribe to our channel, Hamidi Buru Ethics. This picture Rabbi LM to saying we are rebuilding our greatness. Thank you. Tatenta, Siabonga, Edupe, Asante Sana. Have a great day.